hello and welcome to the show for today's rally car build i have got the volvo 850r you guys wanted to see me build one of these and i like the 850r i really do quite like fast estate cars and yeah figured this would be a pretty damn interesting interesting build now it does of course start off as front wheel drive and traditionally with forza games when you convert a front wheel drive car to all wheel drive like i have to do with any vehicle in the series they all have to be run as, as all wheel drive it does tend to make the cars quite oversteery so we could have uh, oopsie that's engine swaps we're not quite getting to that point uh, we could have quite an oversteery volvo we will have to wait and see uh, yeah regarding engines i'd like to keep the standard engine we will see though if the standard engine is capable of getting the volvo up to the top of s1 class uh there is uh i think is that the touring car kit it does look very much like the touring car kit actually It'd be quite cool if we uh, did indeed have the uh possibly touring car front bumper but uh yeah nothing else in terms of the visual stuff for the volvo now tires of course we are going to be on some nice off-road tires which is always good what were they on the front sorry two four fives on the front probably gonna be two four fives all round indeed it is um of course this being front wheel drive from standard we tend to uh yeah not get the largest of of tire widths going on with the vehicle yeah, 245 may be, uh, we may be struggling a little bit on this circuit. We will have to wait and see, though. All of this stuff can go on the car. Uh, because S1 is actually, gives me quite a lot of PI to play with, I'm going to be wanting the handling parts on these vehicles, and we will still be getting plenty of power in this. Uh, we're going to want anti-roll bars. We're going to want a roll cage, and hopefully weight reduction will get it down to a uh, 3,100. Hoping it'll be a little bit lighter than that, but no, well, it's not the case really. Right. So engine-wise, now this is where, as I said, I have a little bit of kind of fear that I don't know if we're going to be able to get this high enough. I don't know what the standard engine in the Volvo is going to be capable of it looks like it might get quite close whether it's quite going to be enough though that is the conundrum turbo give us uh, it's going to be close but it isn't going to be enough to get us to the top of s1 class so we will have to go for a engine swap thankfully upgrade system in this game lovely smooth and quick etc we could go for the turbo rally engine i'm not going to be using that again we won't get the power out of the turbo rally engine we will instead go for the 2.6 liter uh, i6 again this isn't the most powerful of engines however overall it will get more than the volvo stand i think this gets six or seven hundred horsepower so again we're likely to see a lot of power in this car the ute after all did have 700 horsepower and around around similar weight to this so we're probably looking at you know, potentially similar figures uh, we are going to be needing all of these to get it up to the the required sort of power if i can avoid going for intercooler i will uh we can okay 681 horsepower uh, we might okay oh this is gonna be really arsy isn't it we're gonna, we're gonna be at that awkward level whereby uh, <laughs> i don't know flywheel might might just dip us over the edge no it's not typical Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go up for the top turbos and then try and find one of these that will bring us back down to the to the PI that, that I want. And of course, none of it is going to work, is it? Um, okay, I think the first one, if we can take it, no, okay, that's 29 horsepower. So we can get it down to okay, with minus 24 horsepower there and then we're going to have to dump off the fly flywheel is not going to dump off enough God damn it okay there we go right volvo is looking pretty ready to go i just wanted to look at the stats 702 horsepower <laughs> in at 850r 530 torque it does weigh over 3,000 pounds my although that might not be a bad thing on this course we've seen the light cars have a lot of issues so being that bit heavier, maybe we'll get some stability from the Volvo. Maybe we'll get lots of oversteer. I don't quite know. It's likely to be pretty damn fast 
regardless though. Of course, to test out the Volvo, we have come to the Reservoir Trail. It'll get three runs through this course to go as quickly as possible. And currently, the Subaru, the SVX, has a time 2.36.0. That is what we are looking at trying to beat with this car. Now, the Subaru was actually flat out through this opening corner. The Volvo isn't going to be... <laughs> The Volvo is not quite going to uh, have the grip through there. I'm hoping it might have the power, have the acceleration to make up time elsewhere. It certainly does feel quite a lively back end going on in this car. We get slowed down as we now arrive on the dirt section. There we go, a little bit of oversteer from the tank. Now let's not end up in the barrier through there. That's always always good. <laughs> Use the water to kind of turn the car through that section. Now, the bumps, this is where we might be able to make up some time. The Volvo has a little bit of a bounce going on on that uh, landing. That palm tree there is in a really awkward place. <laughs> I only noticed it as I've done this series as I'm trying to kind of find more and more time. Yeah, that palm tree is a little bit of an awkward place. Never mind. Whoa, big sideways moment from the Volvo, though relatively easy to catch. Now, first of the big... Oh! Okay, first the big jumps, however, we caught the rear wheel on the ground, still got away with the landing. Oh, too much speed. Too much speed, we've got to twitch on our way through that corner. Not what you want to be doing with a car, kind of suckers all of your speed out for the next part as well. Hmm, have, have got to be careful, it isn't too terrible in terms of oversteeriness, which is nice, but have got to be aware of the twitchiness. It is, as I had hoped, nice on these landings. It is not bouncing around. We're not losing the back end on the landings like we did with the SVX. That gives me a little bit more confidence to really... Oh, I'm glad that tree was uh, destructible. Gives me confidence to really chuck the car through with speed. Now, we saw with the Subaru, actually, that higher line was the way to go. I might try sticking to it. We may end up kind of experimenting a little bit. Can we be flat out comfortably down here? No, we can't. So again, it's kind of like a double bounce there that is catching the Volvo out. You've got to be really careful of. Once we get past that section down here, we're not too bad. Can we? Yeah. See, even with that, a little bit of an awkward landing. The Volvo isn't sort of skidding all over the track and having all sorts of problems. So there we go. Uh, lap time wise we are a fair way down in fact we did have a crash in all of that but uh, surprising amount actually down I wasn't thinking I was going to be that far off in terms of speed okay we're going to need to find some stage speed I was going to say lap speed that's not quite right we're going to need to find some stage speed with this car if we are going to get a uh, a decent so a decent time. Might as well do the wheel spin while we're here, see if we can get anything exciting. Come on, game! Or not. Nope, of course not. I'm filming. Why would I expect anything different? So, we are needing to find around about seven seconds if we want to be challenging the very fastest cars here. Uh, that might be a tall order, but uh, you never know. We might be able to get out of these vehicles. Now, I know we can't take this that yeah it just, just doesn't have the turning the svx was fantastic for getting turned into these corners it was able to carry really really good speed it didn't quite have the same power as the likes of the ute and it was considerably heavier than the manta so it didn't quite have the same brutal acceleration but the svx made up for it with that turning and that yeah don't get in the volvo the Volvo just doesn't get turned into these corners as nicely right just dip that wheel in there we go <laughs> That's what you want to be doing through that corner. Now, these initial bumps here is not too bad on, but later on they get... Oh, okay, as I say that, we lose the back end ever so slightly. It's certain I've certainly had a lot more difficult to drive cars across these bumps. However, later on, yeah, it, it's still too much for the Volvo uh, up towards this first of the big jumps. Now, if we ended up like we did last time, okay, that's better. Too far to the left, it actually the rear wheel catches on the ground and it gets flicked the other way so we got away with it this time although we're going to run wide into a tree bugger that's corner got me in trouble last time i was 
trying to uh, push the vehicle and it's not worked, it's not worked through there at all ah, uh, crap <laughs> we can carry good speed, I just can't turn it in in the same way that we could with the uh, with Subaru little bit of a shame perhaps for the Volvo, I guess for the rest of this run now and this run is you know very much gone we'll experiment and see what we can and can't get away with in terms of well probably one of the big areas for these cars is coming out of the second puddle that we're going to be approaching any time now because that bump has thrown everything other than the ute has had big issues with that bump and I've now carried way too much speed into there um, so yeah as we leave this section here and around this uh, this large puddle it's the kind of the bumps on the outside perhaps yeah maybe if we take a slightly tighter line on the inside through there we can avoid them so that we can carry the speed down here although you can carry a lot of speed down here and then things get very very scary as well so <laughs> Uh, more trees! We are millimetres away from another big accident here, so that's always fun. And then chuck it into the final corner, which don't don't have grip needed in this car, which is a little bit of a shame. That was a better run though, aside from the clonking into a tree. We're only a second slower and I had to find reverse in all of that, so... There is some speed to be had, I just need to not make any mistakes. Well, it is on to the final run for the mighty Volvo. I'm hoping I can set a little bit more of a competitive time with this vehicle. As I said, I love the 850R. It would be a shame to see it uh, struggle so much, but there we go. That's just how the car is. I'm going to go for a, a little bit of a bigger breakthrough there and just try and get the car neatly out of these corners rather than... Oh, God, even there where I thought I was being quite cautious into... It's just so much understeer. I can't get the poor car turned it's pretty fast accelerating up to 140 miles an hour before we dive off road here but uh, yeah I don't think well you know it, it is half decent accelerating I don't think it's gonna be enough to make up for its struggles in the handling department we are right on the <laughs> right on the limit of crashing into that bridge but have got away with it now up here we'll be a little bit careful we don't lose the back end on that landing which we haven't done and it is neater and tidier this time around again running out towards the wall a little bit we will be flat out down here don't really want to catch the puddle and then keep the speed up the back end wants to let go but we kept it all in check now we're flying a little bit towards the tree have indeed got away with it now slow the car down don't try and get on the power quite so soon or take a tighter line as well that also works looking much better much more pleased with uh, this run as we jump it into the water splash down there now trying to keep up speed through these corners again it's exactly the same as i said earlier i can't can't carry the speed through the turns like the svx we get understeer and then we get a little bit of oversteer it's just not quite as happy i've ended up out a tad wide no weird glitchy bushes though for me to worry about this time around try and make the most of all of this power that we do have going on uh, i run it in running quite deep but it is keeping me out of the puddle i'm still undecided as to which is the best way through all of that oh big air time is it normally that bigger an air time down there i'm not completely sure but there we go right so we're hugging the inside down there that's better actually much better route through there i'm still oh that jump there is quite uh, quite a nasty nasty one through the air we go as we run up towards the second to last quarter it is nice down there though once you got the line right with it it is much happier dealing with all of that as we round the final turn we're gonna round it very very sideways it's not gonna be enough to go quicker than the vehicles that have gone before but a much better showing much better showing indeed from the volvo 238.0 Ah, much happier with the with that time. Yes, it is. The, I say it's the slowest of the cars that I have built. It does still beat the Audi Quattro by some eight seconds in in all of that, which is, you know, not not too bad going whatsoever. I think at the end of the day, the Volvo did not have the grip. It was stable enough across the jumps. I could push it across the jumps, which is always nice. However, it is 
just about a second down on the Opal Manta and a couple of seconds down on the Subaru SVX and the Ford Pursuit Ute. Yeah, we don't we don't have the grip in the Volvo, which is a a little bit of a shame. It wasn't too too tail happy. It was a tad in a couple of places, but uh, yeah, not too terrible on the oversteeriness. Just a general lack of grip causing the the 850R some issues. However, that is uh, going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.